growing up. Uh, I watched uh, our, our, our next guest. He was he tough as nails. He epitomizes toughness. So I, I reached out to him. He called me back. I'm excited about having him. He's a uh, five-time Pro Bowl selection. He's in the Eagles and Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame. Let's go to the Barb's Harley Davidson Sports Hotline and welcome into the locker room number 66, Bill Berge. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Bill. How are you doing? Happy to be with you. Uh, we're in a three-point stance, Bill. We're getting ready for the season. <laughs> you, you know something? A lot of people look forward uh, to uh, from birthday to birthday, from the first of the year to the first of the year. Well, Bill Berge... <laughs> looks forward to the football season, to the football season. And I am looking forward to this year with great anticipation. There's not a lot of uh, high hopes for the Eagles this year. Uh, and they are maybe in a bit of a transition year, but I still think they'll have a good year. And I, I just want to see them. I just want to see them get out there and do their best. And the, the, the key to success, Bill, is... What you've got to do is you've got to win all the games you're supposed to win. You've got to steal a game here or there and uh, get hot towards the end of the season. And if you stay healthy, that's really uh, the big underlining uh, uh, thing with this whole thing. And the year that we went to the Super Bowl, way back in 1980, we probably weren't even in the top ten as far as talent goes, but... Uh, I don't think anybody had as much as a hangnail, and that's what carried us all the way through. Unfortunately, our Super Bowl was really the Dallas Cowboys, and that's not a cop-out. And they said, uh, well, if you can't get ready for the Super Bowl, what can you get ready for? But uh, we put everything into that uh, Dallas Cowboy uh, game in the conference championship, and we really didn't have a lot left in the tank after that. Bill, one of the reasons why I got you on today is because uh, people are comparing uh, Nick Sirianni to your former head coach Dick Vermeil when he first came in. He came in with a lot. He was younger, came in with a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, you know, Coach Vermeil loved his players. You guys to this day have a, such a special bond. Talk to us a little bit about maybe if, you, if you, from what you've seen with Nick Sirianni and what you know about Coach Vermeil. Well, first of all, I don't know too much about uh, Nick Sirianni. Uh, I do know that. Uh, he was uh, born and raised, went to school, high school, uh, and, uh, uh, probably uh, less than 10 miles from where, from where I was uh, born and raised in western New York, uh, a town called Jamestown. But uh, I can tell you an awful lot about Dick Vermeil. And I will say, besides him being my head coach and my boss at one time, I can honestly say he is probably just about the best friend anybody could have. I love him. He's very passionate. And when he came in, at first I said, who in the heck is this Harry High School kid <laughs> from uh, uh, UCLA and uh, out west? I mean, he would say to us, keep your chin straps buckled. Uh, don't take a knee. We'll tell you when you can drink water. And I'm going, what the hell is this all about? I'm an all-pro. I've made all-pro many times. And he's telling me to keep my chin strap buckled. Don't take a knee when I can get a break. And uh, anyhow, what he was trying to do is he was trying to instill the discipline that was so obviously lacking back in those days with the Philadelphia Eagles. And from the time he got there until the time we went to the Super Bowl, which was five years later, I think there was only nine of us that were were left over. But uh, the nine of us and Dick Vermeil, we've got a bond that uh, nobody will ever break. But uh, Dick Vermeil, I'm, I'm telling you, he is absolutely the greatest coach uh, I've ever had. And I had a great one in Paul Brown, uh, Mike McCormick. But uh, Dick Vermeil, I put him right up there on the top with, uh, with nobody around him. Oh, we're talking with... Uh... Eagles Hall of Fame, Philadelphia Sports Hall of Fame, uh, football player from the Eagles, Bill Berge. Bill, about like so you are, you you alluded to the fact that you're a Pro Bowl player. Uh, Dick Vermeil was comes from the West Coast. He's young. Did a lot of did, did a lot of people have like trepidation or not animosity, but uh, you know maybe like weren't certain of how they should take him. I mean, Nick Sirianni's in the same kind of position where he comes in. He's young. Does that play? Does that? The fact that the team, the players? Well, what I did was I said to myself, 
I don't know who the heck this young kid is. This this Frenchman from uh, from <laughs> from nowhere's is uh, the way I really looked at it. Uh, I said that uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to buy into what he's doing, and if it doesn't work out, well then I may have a problem with him. But you know, I could see where it was working out, and the guys that uh, really had a, a tough time with them, they were kind of removed real quick. And uh, I can remember in uh, the first couple of years, I, I would just sit and talk to him. I'd say to him, I'd say, hey, coach, this guy is faking an injury just so he can make the team. I'm telling you right now, he's going to make the team, and he is bad for our team. And Dick Vermeil was way ahead of me. He'd say, well, you know something, Bill? I know what you're saying. Uh, and I understand what he's doing. Uh, leave that up to me. And it just seemed like everything that Dick Vermeil did was done in the right way. And uh, that's why I say that I, I really did buy into the way he did things. And uh, he's just the best. That's all I can say. I mean, I, I couldn't pat him on the back enough. Well, Bill, it's Scott McKay here. Uh, we got to meet a couple of years ago when uh, you, Brian Propp, and Sean Landetta went and took the bases from the <laughs> Phillies game. I is, remember that. Yeah. That was yeah. more than a couple of years ago. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was probably probably four or five years ago. But uh, I remember meeting you and your wife, Mickey, there, and you're both tremendous people. So uh, an honor to have you on. Listen, this is kind of an odd thing when I, I did some my homework <laughs> last night. Back in 1974, you set an NFL record with five interceptions, and you were awarded the largest contract of a defensive player in the NFL at four years for a million dollars. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and you want to know something? That hit every front page of every newspaper in the country. And the headlines were pretty much like, how can any defensive player command that kind of money? This game is getting way out of hand. It's ridiculous. Now, yes, a million dollars for the four years. Let's put this, uh, and this is not relative to the times of now. Uh, Russell Wilson, $36 million a year uh, uh, with the Seattle Seahawks. Now, he's not even, there's probably a half a dozen quarterbacks even above him, but I'm just using Russell Wilson. That's He makes more than $2 million in one game. I mean, <laughs> One million dollars in four years. <laughs> well, in comparison, so maybe I was born. Uh, maybe I was born just at the, the wrong time. But <laughs> I tell you what, uh, everybody just thought it was it was wonderful, and then there was a few people that thought it was absurd too. But uh, you know, I took the money and I ran. <laughs> you know, well, in comparison, T.J. Watt just signed a contract for four years for one hundred and twelve million. Yeah. And I saw that too. I sure did. <laughs> yeah, so. I sure did. It's crazy how the game has changed. What do you What do you think the game, the, the biggest change has been the game from well, back you in know, the day? I'll, I'll tell you what I think the biggest, uh, uh, Scott, uh, the, the biggest change in the game is probably as much as anything the players. Now, back when I played, I'm going to say that we were like, uh, the, the only way I can compare the players today of than the ones of yesteryear, we were like Clydesdales. We would <laughs> go Bam, boom, hit, fall down, uh, get a scrape on us. And uh, that was kind of the way we played it. These, these players today, they're like thoroughbreds. <laughs> they are streamlined like you can't believe. They are, without a doubt, they're faster than we were. They're stronger than we were. And uh, they are much more gifted than we are now because of the way they're so... They're so muscle bound; they they can get hurt real easy. Back when I played, nobody got hurt really. We would get a bump. Nobody would really have a knee injury or anything. Uh, gosh, I used to laugh at the term a high ankle sprain. What the hell is an ankle sprain? <laughs> That's high. It's either you got an ankle sprain or you don't have an ankle sprain. But uh, I think that's the biggest thing. These players today where we would, after the season was over, the first thing we would do is we'd either go find another job or uh, we'd go on vacation. Today, these guys, they will maybe take a break for a week, two at the very most, and then get right back in the weight room and get ready for the following season. Uh, and I guess our money had an awful lot to do with that, guys. 
We're talking with uh, Bill Berge, two-time All-Pro Eagles linebacker, number 66. You know, Bill, when I talk to guys that played in your era uh, from, from the Philadelphia sports scene, uh, 1980 was a pretty big year. I don't know if oh, we'll ever see that year. again. I mean, every single sports professional team in our area, in, our, in the city, all went to their respective championship games. I, I don't know if we'll ever <laughs> see that again. No, it was that was a very very special time, and and then in 1980 uh, we got to play in the Superstars uh, uh, competition out in Hawaii, and uh, we and the Philadelphia uh, Phillies we were uh, the 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 two at the the top of the the ladder, and we went against each other, and uh, we ended up uh, beating the Phillies, but. Uh, <laughs> The Phillies, I think that year they beat uh, Kansas City, yeah. and uh, you know it was 1980 was just a great year. The 76ers, uh, the uh, the Flyers, I, I, I mean the basketball team, uh, the baseball, everybody they were all great, and uh, it was nice. It was really nice to be a whole part of that era. Bill, you you were a fan favorite in Philly, and and I think it was honestly because of the way you played the game. You played it the right way. You played it with a lot of passion, and that's that's something the Philly fans want. Do you did you find it? A lot of guys we've had on the show here find it has found it tough to play in Philly. Yeah, like did, did, did you did you find it that way? Yeah, you know, not really. You produce, and they're going to. Uh, they're going to clap. You do something stupid, uh, they're going to boo you. We understand that. Uh, I, I had a real nice love affair with the uh, the people in Philadelphia, not only because I was an okay football player, but uh, when I would leave that locker room after a football game, we might have our butts handed to us real bad. But I will honestly tell you this. I signed everybody's autograph. I was cordial to everybody and uh all the way to the parking lot where the players had uh, their own little parking area i never said no to any one of those uh people because you know something guys you're not going to believe believe this it's, it's really funny if you're nice and kind to people all the way up that ladder of success guess what guys you're going to meet those same people coming back down that uh that uh, ladder, and uh, you know something, I'm uh, I'm an old man now, but I can still go down the streets of Philadelphia, and people will say to me, "Hey, Bill, thank you for the uh, good old days. Uh, we appreciate everything you've done," and you know that gives me a good warm feeling inside. Yeah. We're talking with Bill Berge, two-time Pro Bowl Eagles linebacker, number 66. Let's talk real quick, a little bit. We got a few about a minute left, a minute left, a uh, couple minutes here. About the Eagles linebackers, uh, we, we're looking at the, the depth chart here, and we see uh, some some changes with the Eagles linebackers. Um, uh, Jenard, uh, Avery, Wilson, and Singleton are looks like going to be your starting three. What do you make of those guys? You know something? I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know a thing about them. And I will <laughs> tell you one thing about the linebackers. The linebackers, uh, it's getting to the point where uh, – they're a dying breed. There, there, there's no Dick Butkus, Ray Nitschke, uh, Mike Curtis, uh, Willie Lanier. Uh, there, there's none of those guys anymore. Uh, what they have now is they've got these uh, coverage. Uh, yeah, coverage uh, guys. Uh, they've got these uh, defensive backs that are 220 pounds that can run with all these wide receivers. And uh, I, I'm telling you, it's. The linebackers, it's, it's a dying breed. It really is. They no, just don't really. So so when you ask me about the, the linebackers of Philadelphia, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful or anything, no. but uh, I don't know anything about them. Bill, let me ask you, you, you uh, played on teams that were, you know, supposed to win, teams that weren't supposed to What do you like being chased or being the chaser? Like, you know, being the underdog, um, going after, you know, better teams or, or being on top and, and protecting that. You know something? I always wanted to be the, the guy out front. I wanted to be uh, having everybody come after me. And uh, <laughs> I didn't want to have uh, uh, have to sneak up on, on anyone. 
And uh, you know something that worked both ways with me, but uh, to be the guy out front, I'll never forget the year that we went to the Super Bowl. I, I, I am no, I'm pretty sure I'm right when I say this. We were nine and one, and we went to New Orleans, and we were playing a team zero uh, and ten. The Saints and Archie Manning were zero and ten, and we get into this game and. Uh, I can remember that ride down there. Everybody was real cocky, and it really bothered me that uh, people weren't uh, ready for this game. But, hey, we're 9-1, and one and they're 0-10. And Why in the hell don't you think that's going to be a slaughter? We go into that game, and I'm telling you, New Orleans puts 14 points up on the board real quick. And I'm telling you, we are arguing and fighting defensively. We're going crazy. Marion Campbell, our defensive coordinator, had us over on the sideline, and he said, will somebody please tell me what the hell is happening out there? And Dennis Bigfoot Harrison dropped a dime on the entire defense. He said, I'll tell you what's happening, Coach. Everybody's fighting with everybody. With that, Marion Campbell exploded, and he went to every player on the defense, and he'd say, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? And John Bunning would say, I just want him to, to play the, the defense that I call good. Uh, uh, you know, he, he had asked somebody else, uh, uh, Claude Humphrey, what do you want to do, coach? I just want to go get that damn quarterback. <laughs> good, Claude, you go get the quarterback. That's your job from here on. And he went around to everybody. We went out there. After being down fourteen to nothing, we ended up beating them thirty-eight to uh, fourteen. <laughs> All right, we're asking our listeners today uh, for a prediction of the season. We'll ask you, Bill. What do you think of the Eagles this year? What's their record going to be? I'm going to say five hundred. Uh, we've got uh, a few spots that we have to fill. Now I think we have the seventeen games. Year, and the only thing be is real good, but I'm going to I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a, a five hundred guy. So eight, eight, and one. <laughs> yes, uh, that's right. That's 17 games now. That's correct. <laughs> 8 8 and 1. All right, Bill. Well, listen, we really appreciate it. I lo- love talking and reminiscing about the past and, and hearing from you. Uh, a t- a two time Pro Bowl selection, number 66, Bill Berge. Thank you so much. Have a great Eagles weekend. Okay, thank you. And it was a pleasure chatting with you guys.